Hello friends, I'm Vishal Patel, lecturer at UHP Institute of Postgraduate Studies and Research, Kadi. And today my topic is Introduction to the Immune System and that is of Immunology for the BSc Microbiology Semester 3. So, today we're looking for the immunity. So, what is immunity? Immunity is a body's ability to resist or elimination of the potentially harmful foreign materials or abnormal cells. We can say the harmful materials or the microbes also. History. What imparts an immunity? So starting from the 1890s, Emil von Baring and the Kitasato, serum from the vaccinated animals want the protecting and that was for the diphtheria, Matnikov, that he found salivary immunity in 1880 and the Maris Chase in 1940 transfer of the WBC immunity for the tuberculosis. Since 1901, there have been 19 Nobel Prizes for the immunology related research. So, what actually a functions of immune system? This is the functional system, not an organ system. So complex system includes skin as a physical barrier, lining of mucous membrane as a physical barrier, secretions of tears, mucus, etc. as a microbial antimicrobial agents, blood cells and the vascular as a WBC, bone marrow, liver, mixed complement proteins, lymphatic system and the lymphoid organs that helps to involve into the immune system. Most tissues have a resident immune cells that can help for the immunity. So, immunity. Immunity, that means it's relating what exempt state of protection from the infectious diseases. Immunity is the body's ability to resist or eliminate potentially harmful foreign materials or abnormal cells. Consists of the following activities. Defense against involving pathogens that would be bacteria and viruses, removal of the worn out cells, old RBCs because they have 120, 120 days ability, tissues, debris from injury or the disease, identification and the destruction of the abnormal or the mutant cells. They are not, uh, means they don't have a role in a cell system, reduction of the foreign cells, organ transplant, inappropriate responses like allergies, autoimmune disease effect. So this is a consistence of the following activities for the immunity. You can see immunity, that means elimination of the virus, carcinogen, pollution, germs, parasites, bacteria, fungi and the toxins from our body. Overview of the immune system. There are two types of the immune system. First one is the innate immunity. Second one is the adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is known as a non-specific first line defense immune system. And adaptive immunity is known as a specific second line of the defense immune system. So this is the chart of the typical immune response. You can see innate immunity, rapid response to the broad range of the microbes. There are two types of defensive system, external as well as the internal. When we look out for the external defenses, skin, mucous membrane and the secretions, different secretions are inverted into the external defenses. While in internal defenses, you can see the phagocytic cells, antimicrobial proteins, inflammatory responses and the natural killer cells and the complement activations are included in the internal defenses. While other side, Acquired immunity is a slower response, but is it, it is specific to the microbes. So there are two types of the responses here. First one is a humoral response and second one is a cell mediated response. First one is an antibody uh, mediated response and second one is a cytotoxic lymphocyte mediated response. So what is the difference between innate immunity and adaptive immunity? So innate immunity is a note has no time lag, but adaptive immunity take a lag period for the adequation. Innate immunity is not antigen specific, but adaptive immunity is antigen specific. 
there is no memory for the innate immunity but adaptive immunity develops the memory so they can memorize our cells our antigens okay by the production of the antibody the innate immunity system so innate immunity system describe into the two parts first one is external defenses and and second one is the internal defenses as i earlier said innate immunity system external defenses so first one is anatomical barriers that is known as a mechanical factors so first one is skin skin is uh, anatomical or physiological barrier this is present in our body second is a mucociliary skeleton that is present in the mucous membrane third one is the flushing extent of the saliva tears and the urine so as we know the saliva is present in our salivary glands tears are present in our eye and urine as, uh, is generated in the urogenital pathways so they have flushing action so they can use or act as anatomical barriers anatomical barriers are the chemical factors also like um, antimicrobial peptides in the sweat sweat that is produced to cool down our body so that sweat contain the antimicrobial peptides that can cleave the and microbes enzymes and microbial cell wall second one is the hcl in stomach we all know that this is the gastric acid and that acid having the uh, high acidity in our stomach so no microbes are able to grow or able to live in this particular environment third one is the lysozyme in tears so what exactly saliva and tears contain the lysozyme lysozyme is one type of the enzyme that cleave the bond between or the cell wall so they can cleave the microorganisms so these are the chemical factors that is present in the different different uh, like sweat stomach and the tears and saliva stomach containing the mucous membrane anatomical barriers as a biological factors as a normal flora microbes in many parts of the body that is present and act as a normal flora they can't be harmful they can't be pathogen but they are present on the body surface so there are thousand species of the bacteria more than thousand species of bacteria of the normal flora present in our body and competes with the pathogen for the nutrient and the space so this is a external factor that can act as a anatomical barriers or the physical barriers now let's talk on the innate immune system for the internal defenses so innate immune system com components of the blood so blood containing two parts plasma and the red blood cells serum so plasma containing a complement protein coagulation proteins and the cytokines while a buffy coat composed of the white uh, the white blood cells and the platelets that are important and that is known as a wbc so this is the extracellular part but that is known as a interesting factors for the immune system innate immunity let's start with the white blood cells you can see here the monocyte use you know fields lymphocyte neutrophils and the basophils lymphocyte that is uh, 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 divided into the three types b lymphocyte t lymphocyte and the natural killer cells and monocyte is a non activated stage but later on when it will active that is converted into the macrophages neutrophils in innate immune system here we are looking for the innate immunity so we discuss we will discuss only those cells they are Uh, they have a role into the innate immunity so first one is a neutrophil so that is very most abundant wbc uh, around 50 to 60% abundance into the wbcs uh, in the blood this is a very efficient phagocytic cells most important cells of the innate immune system so neutrophil having the phagocytotic activity so what is phagocytosis phago means to eat and side the cells eating of different microbes or the foreign particles by the cells wbc is most example is a neutrophil fine eat and digest microbes that is the process of phagocytosis you can see the different videos of the neutrophils that can find the microbes and eat and the phagocytes 
this is the uh, link for that the neutrophils find microbes. How do exactly neutrophils eat and the digest microbes? This is the figure of this is neutrophil. This is the pseudocoria. This is the plasma membrane of that particular neutrophile. One, these microbes get attracted by this uh, neutrophil by the different uh, lysozymes or different um, chemicals, chemotaxis. They can attract to the neutrophil. Then ingestion started, and with the help of the lysosome and the phagosome, they digested this. Uh, uh, microbes and eat totally. So this is the simple process of the neutrophil, how neutrophil eat and they digest microbes. What is in the granules? These granules, as I say, digestive enzyme with the phagosomes. So both processes occurred. First one is a biological, the second one is a chemically. Chemically in the means in the presence of the lysozyme, that is an enzyme that is used for the cleavage of that particular microbes and with the use of the physical barrier they are doing the ingestions. Second is the monocytes. Monocytes are being uh, less than 5% or the equivalent to the 5% of the WBC equivalent migrate into the tissues and they become macrophages. When they get migrated into the tissues they become the macrophages in active state. Here you can see this is the tissue macrophages come into the lungs, bone and histocytes. So they are as known as the coupler cells, microglia, intestinal macrophages, alveolar macrophage, osteoclast, histocytes. Okay. So macrophages are the big eaters. Phagocytosis of the microbes in tissues. Neutrophils are present only in the blood for phagocytosis or normally done by the macrophages because macrophages also present in the different tissues. This is known as the antigen presenting cells also. Next one is the natural killer cells. Natural killer cells is, is not a B lymphocyte, not a T lymphocyte. This is important part of the innate immune system. They kill the viruses and the bacteria infected cells. Okay, that cells that are infected with the virus and the bacteria, that particular cells are destroyed by the natural killer cells. So they kill cancer cells also. Okay, so here this is the picture how they are doing of the process for the cells they are infected with the viruses and the bacteria. And can cell differentiate to, to kill uh, cells to kill. They do not affect uninfected un cells or normal cells, but your cells is infected or it is cancerous, your nature killer cells will destroy that particular cell. Tall like receptors, known as the TLR. This is the transmembrane protein. It has a great role in innate immunity too. They are present on the macrophages or that is present on the few other cells. Conserve across the vertebrates important part of the innate immune system as I earlier said. What they do? They look out for the microbes or their component on the cell surface. They bind to the microbes or their component. They trigger a cascade of the events to kill or protect against the pathogen. They are the immune sensors. Here you can see these are the security and they are going to alert the cell system if any component of microbes are present on the cell surface, look out for the microbes. You can see, and the microbes bind to the TLRs. Components of the microbes are to bind to the TLRs. What happens when the TLR bind to the microbes? There, when there are four different mechanisms occur: secretion of the cytokines on the interferon, inflammation and the phagocytosis of the infected cells and the apoptosis of the infected cells. This four system occurred when the TLR binding to the microbes. Summary. Innate response, internal defenses cellular. Come into the play when the external defenses are the breach, neutrophils, monocytes or macrophages, nature killer cells and the TLRs are the important features for the innate immunity as the internal defenses. Component of blood. 
we were discussed this WBC, okay, a role of the WBC into the innate immunity. What about the complement proteins, coagulation proteins, and the cytokines? So, what are the cytokines? That are the small proteins secreted by the cells of the immune system. So, affect the behavior of the other cells. Okay, you can see this is the uh, cytokine gene that is present in the cell by this uh, secret, I mean, immune response. The cell secret this cytokine, and that cytokine is very important for the triggering the cells as a part of the signal. They act as a receptor and give the signal to the biological effect. Key players in innate in acquired immunity. This is known as signaling molecules. Which cells release the cytokines? There are different cells. Uh, you can see the neutrophils when they encounter pathogen, macrophages when they encounter pathogen. TLR bind to the microbes or component of the microbes. Nature killer cells on the encountering of microbe infected cells or the tumor cells. And the lymphocyte when they are activated. Examples of the cytokines is known as the interferons, interleukins, and the tumor necrosis factor T and F. Complement. This is the very important third line defense system of the innate immunity. A large number of the distinct plasma protein that react with the one another that is known to C1 to the C9 cascade C protein. Complement can bind to the microbes and decode the microbes. Essential part of the innate immune response and hence is adaptive immune response taught later. This is the complement protein role into the innate immunity. You can see these C protein are able to do three processes. First one is to facilitate the phagocytosis. Second is a direct lysis of the pathogen. And third one, inflammation. Okay. How do these C proteins facilitate the phagocytosis? So, normally, bacteria that is coated with the C protein, you can see here, this is the C3B. IC3B or C4B. So, this binding of the uh, C protein to the bacterial cells that enhance the phagocytosis. On the other hand, you can see phagocytotic cells, they containing the complement receptor. And by the binding with this uh, phagocytotic cells, this microorganism can be destroyed by these phagocytotic cells. So this is the triggering process of the microbes for the phagocytosis. How do C protein lysis the pathogens? You can see here this membrane attack complex formed by the C protein. This is the mechanism behind this complex proteins and the cell walls of the bacteria that do the puncture activated complemented proteins from the complexes of the protein that create holes into the bacterial cell wall. And by the doing the cell wall holes, the cell secretions get outer from the cell wall of the bacteria and get, cells get punctured. And by this process, your microbes get punctured by the C proteins and that can, uh, your bacteria can disturb by this mechanism. The pathogen cannot be alive by the C protein. Coagulation proteins. Coagulation mechanism to stop bleeding after injury to the blood vessels. That is very important. Complex pathway involves the platelets, coagulation factors, and the vitamin K. How does blood clot? There are three steps for the formation of the blood clot. Starting from the platelets attack to the um, endothelium or the start, um, um, place where your injuries occurred. Second step, the platelets start to the release the fibrin and begin to the seal of the endothelium. Here, this platelets are secreted the fibrin protein that act as a sealing, that do the sealing process at this uh, site of the injury. And the third stage, the fibrin network traps the RBC and uh, completely seals the endothelium. With the use of the RBC, they are, this is the red blood cells, fibrin polymers. This make one bridge and seal this, that particular uh, site of the uh, injury. Okay, you can see here also fibrin clot, platelets plug, vessels contract, injury of the damage. Okay, coagulation 
is a delicate balance because coagulation proteins that uh, blood clotting inflammation and the apoptosis while anticoagulating prevent blood clotting inhibit inflammation and inhibit the apoptosis so coagulation and anti-coagulation both having a different distinct features coagulation and the innate immunity here pathogens and cytokines are doing the coagulation while anticoagulating alone coagulation protein increases the inflammation and increases the apoptosis of the infected cell so if your pathogens are present they are doing this such type of activity to reduce our innate immunity and to reduce the chances of the anticoagulant so this is the summary what happens when the external defenses fail we see the innate immunity with the external defenses and the internal defenses with the phagocytosis cells antimicrobial proteins inflammatory response natural killer cells and the complement innate immunity innate response internal defenses so cellular neutrophils monocyte and k cells and tlr on the other hand extracellular cytokines complement and the coagulations inflammation complex biological process by which body responds to the pathogens and the irritants associated with the swelling of tissues k player in innate immune response i think all um, was going by the inflammation process all roads lead to the inflammation here you can see neutrophils monocyte nature killer cells tlrs are known as a cellular they are also do the inflammation responsible for the inflammation other side extracellular like cytokines interferon c proteins coagulation proteins also responsible for the inflammation so what exactly inflammation and the vascular changes vasodilation of tissues or blood vessels here you can see this is the normal blood vessels by the inflammation you can see the dilated blood vessels increase the capillary permeability this is the normal blood vessels but by doing inflammation all the rushes of the blood cells all type of the wbc rush to that particular site when where the inflammation will take will be taken signs of the inflammation as as i uh, earlier said that the vascular changes vasodilation heat or the redness and the fever are the symptoms of the inflammation while at the capillary permeability swelling pain and the temporary loss of the loss of the functions so redness at the heat as an example of the burn and the swelling if someone bitten you by some rod or by something so this is a uh, symptoms of the swelling so this is the signs of the inflammation here this is the sites or the symptoms or the uh, role of the inflammation signs for the you can see the heat redness swelling pain okay inflammation and the innate immunity so actual inflammatory response that mediates the inflammation inflammation by the pathogen removal so vascular permeability and the dilation neutrophil and the macrophages chemotaxis by the inflammation neutrophils and macrophages rushes towards the sites of the inflammation they came for the phagocytosis of the microbes that are present at the site of the inflammation okay so this is the preliminary uh, role of the macrophages and the neutrophil at the site of the inflammation this is the histamine that is produced by the cell and that leads to the adaptive immune response the role of the inflammation in innate immunity this is the initiation of the phagocytosis is pathogens are present at the site of the inflammation macrophages and the neutrophil will kill that particular pathogen by the phagocytosis limiting the spread of the infections obviously they uh, reduce the chances of the infection spreading 
stimulate the adaptive immune response and uh, initiate the tissue repair. So, not everything about the inflammation is good. This um, that is um, proved by this picture: Godzilla, Godzilla, and the Bedzilla. If someone is giving roses to that particular dinosaur, this is the Godzilla. But this dinosaur will um, feed out the particular man who gives who gave her or his flower. So that is a bad Zilla. So both having a different uh, distinct uh, features, the good and the bad about the inflammation. So progressing and the healing, th there are two sides for the inflammation. First one is a progressing and healing, and second is a progressive and the destruction. So on the first side, progressive and healing, you can see the chemical irritant, prostable cuts, okay, trauma, allergic reactions, burn, and the infection. This is the preliminary response of the inflammation. While the progressive destruction, if inflammation is going higher and higher, cardiovascular disease, autism, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune disease, neurological disease, Alzheimer, and the cancer also. So you can see these are this is the bridge between inflammation for the destruction for the healing. Okay, so good and bad both for the inflammation. Okay, acute and short term, and the chronic and the long term. Chronic inflammation or the tissue damage. Chronic inflammation macrophages in the injured tissues. Macrophages release toxins, including the reactive oxygen species or the ROS that injured the tissues. Here you can see this is the normal tissue and this is the chronic inflammation tissues where there are so much numbers of the macrophages present. Chronic inflammation is almost always accompanied by the tissue destruction. Okay, this is the picture of the chronic inflammation and the tissue damage. Here you can see the activities. Immunogens and the antigens. So, what is immunogen and antigen? A substance that elicits the immune response. Hemoral or cell mediated immune response. A substance that acts as a foreign material but that is responsible to elucidate or uh, adequate or generate the immune response in our body. It is known as immunogen and antigen. Okay. So, thank you so much for listening to me.